Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a pretty interesting design for you. It's one I haven't really done before, this being a neonish theme. I've done a cyberpunk one, at least a cyberpunk design in the past. That was for a server banner. This is a channel banner. And I figured it's simple enough that anybody could make it, but it's also a pretty fun design to even build off of this because this in itself is rather simple. And I guess that's for the whole point with neon themes, but there's definitely room for you to go in and make adjustments of your own. And I thought all in all it would just be interesting for you guys to try it out. So without me delaying any further, let's just jump right into this tutorial. I'm going to start off by going to File, New, and we want 1200 by 530. And can we make the... Yep, we make it transparent right off the bat. I'm not sure why in every single video I've ever done, I always left it as white. I guess I never really looked too far into these settings to see that I could make it transparent. Probably should be a no-brainer, my bad. There we go, starts off with a nice transparent layer for us. Moving one of those steps. And then we're gonna come over to this left side, go to our rectangle tool and just drop it down. Now you may have noticed, I've seen comments about it with this issue coming up in Photopia, but I haven't seen any comments about Photoshop, but I'm sure some people have wondered. Photoshop definitely did have a rounded rectangle tool in the past, but it was a little redundant. There wasn't really any need for it, mostly because if you go to properties on the right side and you only see properties, if you go to window, go down our properties and click properties, or if you're using Photopia, it's going to say PRO on the side and you'll see a window not as detailed. You just see the transform settings and these edge settings. But in the edge settings, you can just change the curve of the edge if you want, all from the same location. So it made the whole rounded shape tool, or having a separate tool for that, kind of useless and pointless. So they just got rid of it. At least that's my guess. I don't actually know. So to start off the bat, we're going to make sure this is always zero. And for the stroke, we want none. And the fill, we want to use the following color. And pause if you have to to get the hex, but it's 2E, 2E, 2E. So let's drop that down. And now make sure that these are not linked. And then go over to window. I mean, sorry, width. I'm not sure where I got window from. And we're going to do 780 by, and then go to the height by 215. Then I'm going to come to our move tool and then I'm going to use alt to zoom in while scrolling my mouse. Let's make sure this is centered. And I always mention this but the reason we have all this extra space outside of our initial frame just in case we need to drag stuff out or we need to use that space and it doesn't really matter because at the end we're going to get rid of it anyway. But it just provides us an extra working environment. Now let's do Control G to group this up, and we're going to call this the base area. We're going to call this the base. Then I'm going to create another new layer, and I'm going to grab the following hex. Let's drop it in here. One EEFF7. Then I'm going to go back to my rectangle tool. I should drop this down, make sure there is no curve. I want three pixels here. And for this one, I want 770, and for the height, I'm going to want 204. And this one, I'm just going to make sure this is all nice and centered. This is the first one, we're going to call this the, well, it's not quite centered, is it? If you want to make final adjustments when you're on the move tool, just use your arrow keys, and you can move everything by one pixel. So we're going to call this the outer edge and just double clicking on the name of the specific object to actually be able to change its name. That's the outer edge. I'm going to do control J, call this the inner edge. I'm going to go over to my width. I'm going to make this one 750 by 184. And this one, I'm going to make sure it is also centered. Yeah, that looks good to me. Inner edge, let's right click on the eyeball, let's make this all red, just to keep ourselves organized. And then for now, I'm gonna close out of that, create a new layer, 
I'm gonna group that and I'll call this the text area. I click an eyeball and let's just make it orange. Now we're gonna switch to our pink color and for the pink I'm using F83DB4. So I'm gonna click OK. And then we're just gonna drop this down and let's say this would be welcome. I want about 95, 96 pixels for the sizing. You know, let's just make this a clean 100, might as well. Click the check mark. I'm gonna make sure this is centered. Let's move it down just a tad. I'm gonna right click, go to blending options, go into outer glow and make sure I'm using that same pink for the color and the opacity and the size is what we'd be messing around with to make this more or less neon looking. So you don't want it too much, otherwise it looks kind of messy, but if you keep the size reasonable, so let's say here and play with the opacity, you can get some pretty nice effects going. And I am content with that. Might be a little on the too much side, but I'll leave it as is and leave it up to your discretion as to whether or not you want to adjust that further. And of course, as always, pause if you have to to get the settings that I am using. Okay, so I'm going to collapse that. I do not need that extra layer anymore. Then I'm going to create, nope, back to the base. I'm going to create a new layer and do control G. And this I'm going to call the lines. And then here, we're gonna go to this left side, go to our line tool. And for the stroke, we wanna be using that same pink color. And so we only want three pixels for the thickness of the line. Let's just drag this across. That's the first one. Then we'll do a second one below it. Go back to our line tool. I'm holding shift as I'm dragging it to make sure it's completely straight. And this one's gonna go like that. And then this one I'm gonna make sure is centered. Let's move it up some. Might not be enough. And then let's take a line from below and then make sure we move it underneath there. I don't think I actually want six pixels. So I have it at six pixels currently as in, in the distance between the two. I think I'm going to bump it up to 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 6, 7, 8, 9. And this line here in the middle is just a tad too long, so I'm going to bring it in a little bit. And you know, you can always check the right side and properties where it says the width, if you want to get the exact values I'm using, but I'm just kind of eyeballing it at the moment. Yeah, that should be good. I'm gonna take all of this, do control G, call this the left and the lines. I'm gonna right click, go to blending options, go to outer glow. And of course, we're gonna be using similar stuff, but not quite, because you can see it's a bit too thick here. So the size, I'm gonna reduce the size, increase the opacity. Great. So for now, I'm gonna set this over here, but I might adjust it in a second once I get the center icon placed down. And before I forget, I want to go back to the base, go into blending options, go over to inner glow. We're using pink, and I believe these are all the correct settings. Yeah. So you can see there's now a faint pink outline. You don't want to do too much or too little. Any less than this, you're not really going to see it, and any more, it's going to be a bit too overbearing. And just adding this there helps add to the whole neon effect. If you left it out, it would feel a bit I guess empty, so it's nicer to have this little extra effect in there. So the base, I'm gonna collapse that. Lines, believe that open for now. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm not gonna delete anything, create a new layer. Put it between the base and the text. Actually, I didn't need to create a new layer. I'm not sure what I'm talking about. Drag in the icon they're gonna be using. I'm using a Discord logo, because this is the welcome channel or the welcome banner. So you'll probably use something like the Discord logo to welcome somebody in this banner, the Discord server. I'm kind of rambling a bit. Anyway, let's drag this down. Make sure it is not too large, not too small. That looks fine. Right click, blending options. 
color overlay. Okay, right click, rasterize layer style, right click, blending options, outer glow. And is that too much? Is that too little? That might be okay. Mm, I'll leave it there for now. We'll see. I'll think about that. I'm going to call this the icon. Let's make this blue. And let's center the icon. Come on, you're going to center for me? If I get rid of the lines, will you center better? If I get rid of the text, are you going to center for me? Hmm? I'll consider that centered. It looks centered. Is the text not centered? Well, the text should be centered. I used to be imagining things. Something looks off center there. I'll, I'll leave it for now, but a little sketchy. All right, so let's move this in a little bit, not too much. Make sure that is, that is centered there. I can see the guiding line popping up. Yep, wait, there we go. And let's do control J, let's call this the right. Let's move it over, 50 pixels. Mm, no, that's not right. There we go, 36. Something still looks off here with the centering. I'm not sure what is going on. Hmm. I wonder if it's just me. I'll chalk it up as it being just me, but I don't know. I'll leave it. All right, let's collapse the lines. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna do Control G. Let's call this the circles. And the circle is also going to have an outer glow, and this time it's going to be cyan blue, whichever color you want to call it. Let's go over to our ellipse tool, and drag this down. We only want three pixels, and we want to use that blue color. And just in case you don't have it, this is the hex code. It's the same blue we used everywhere else. So, that's going to put one right here. A bit smaller. Right, one there. One here. And then one there. Cool. I'm just going to call this the left. Control J. Call this the right. And then we'll drag that over while holding shift so I can't move it up or down, only left and right. And then that looks about even. Let's just make sure the text itself is lined up how we want it. I think it is. Uh, actually, there's no adjustments needed. This is perfect. So from here, I'm going to highlight over the entire thing with the rectangular marquee tool. Edit, copy, merge, new, create, control V. Don't need to delete anything. And from here, we can either do file, export, save for web which is what I recommend, and these are the presets that I'm using, PNG24. This just compresses it, makes it a much smaller file. I haven't noticed any noticeable decreases in quality. It might decrease quality somewhat, but it's definitely not at all noticeable. Or you can either do file, save as, PNG. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Hope you found it helpful, hope you like this design. Yeah, have a great day.